Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Bill Haas, Wildlife Resource Management Supervisor here at Game and Fish. Bill's in charge of uh, our wildlife management areas around the Bismarck area, South Central North Dakota. Bill, how many wildlife management areas statewide do we have? We have a little over 220 actual wildlife management areas, which encompasses a little over 220,000 acres. Okay, are they all owned by the Game and Fish Department? No, actually only probably about half of them are. Uh, we lease some properties from other government agencies, such as Corps of Engineers, Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, North Dakota DOT, among some others. Okay, some are very large, some are pretty small. Right, yeah, we're on, right now we're on the Wahi Wildlife Management Area south of Bismarck. Uh, that's in Morton, Burley, and Emmons County. That's 16,000 acres. Um, and then we manage some that are as small as 40 acres or less. So all sorts of sizes, all types of habitat. Okay, what is the purpose of wildlife management areas? It, it, it's just like you said, it's wildlife management. That's our objective. Some of the different species we manage are turkeys, deer, waterfowl, simp rabbits, squirrels even, um, grouse, pheasant and turkey and deer are the big ones though. Um, with that said, um, there are other uses. You know, we do have gun ranges, we do have boat ramps, um, you know, shore fishing access. So there's all sorts of other activities that take place, but really um, wildlife management is our main goal. And, and so we, we we're able to use some other uh, activities. That's great as long as it doesn't interfere too much with our our main goal. So raising wildlife, raising wildlife, providing yep. habitat. Yep, providing hunting access as well. So um, really, what we're trying to do is provide the best habitat we can to produce wildlife, um, maintain the highest populations possible that can sustain harvest, um, and then they're all open to uh, hunting. Uh, in the fall and we have in spring for that matter sure and we have wildlife management areas statewide yes yep statewide yep and and we have six districts so um, there's six folks just like myself around the state we have uh, williston riverdale bismarck jamestown devil's lake and then lone tree offices near harvey okay with all these wildlife management areas comes a lot of work especially at this time of year what right. what are your guys out doing right now yeah spring is extremely busy they don't make enough daylight this time of year for us i mean just similar to a farmer or a rancher i mean we're planting food plots we're planting grass we're starting our grazing rotations um, we're going to start spraying noxious weeds real soon uh, a lot of different things like that so we're super busy and um you know but it's good it's fun stuff so Bill, on some of these wildlife management areas around the state, uh, we have some grazing going on. Explain yeah. that a little bit. Yeah, so each one of our um, grassland areas we have a management plan for. So that may be grazing, it could be haying, it could be a prescribed burn, uh, or a combination of each. And so grazing is one of those things that maybe didn't play, take place so much 15 years ago, but we realized by leaving these areas idle all the time, it wasn't the right thing to do. So now some of these areas we're trying to catch up. So we have Kentucky bluegrass that's just taken over, and so it's just a slick of, of Kentucky bluegrass. There's no cover out there. And so what we found is we need to go into those areas and remove that thatch and remove that litter every so often. And that way <clears throat> that, that grass is going to come back and it's going to produce even more cover for the wildlife. Um, and, and also when we're doing that, uh, we'll try to do it early in the spring because we're targeting those cool season invasive grasses. And then hopefully by fall, if we have any precipitation, the cover's grown back and there's, still, and there's huntable cover. Um, and then on top of that, we only do it once every few years. It's not something to do every single year. And then and each area has its own unique plan. Uh, let's move into some of the rules and regulations. Uh, at this time of year, we have different rules and regs than we do in the fall. Mm -hmm. Uh, explain some of those. Uh, dog training, for example. Right. Um, f dog training is a big one. Uh, from April 1st to August 20th, we don't allow any dog training. Um, and then year-round for professionals. But for your, just your amateur person, you know, those are, the, those are the dates. Now, with that said, there are some WMAs, especially in the southwest, such as Indian Creek Dam. We've had issues with um, a large amount of, of dog training going on right around that August 20th and it gives us a lot of concern because there are studies that have taken place that prove that um, the brood success and recruitment is reduced by um, these training activities. So, um, but something to keep in mind, we, we just want to reduce the disturbance on the wildlife is really our goal. Okay, what are some of the other rules? Camping, for example. Um, camping, yeah, that's one where um, <clears throat> each area is a little different. In general, you can camp on wildlife management areas for a maximum of 10 days. There are some specific WMAs, um, mostly in Williston, along Autobahn. Uh, there's a few 
scattered throughout the state where only uh, camping is allowed, or it's not allowed on Tuesday and Wednesday is how it's worded. Um, and the objective was there is what we had is people that were living on the wildlife management area and our law enforcement folks would show up and they didn't, couldn't prove that they're only there 10 days. So then they have to wait 10 more days to prove it. So this ended up, this is an idea we came up with, I suppose, five years ago and it's worked really well. I think people understand why we're doing that. We don't want to have to restrict people, but it's something that we need to do to benefit um, everybody's uh, opportunity to, to utilize these areas. Sure. In those areas, can you have campfires? Yes, uh, you can. Um, but use. Uh, we just encourage people to just use common sense because some of these areas are really primitive and there could be standing grass and um, you know just make sure you're really safe with that. Wahi Wildlife Management Area we had a burn ban on we removed that so you can have a campfire but also remember that these areas are are included with the county restrictions and a lot of times those would be um, correlated to the, the um, fire index. Fourth of July is in a few weeks here what are the rules about fireworks? Yeah, fireworks. Every year we have uh, fires that happen on our wildlife management areas, and it's from people shooting fireworks. And so there's two reasons, really. It's the fire danger um, part of it, but then also, you know, that's a lot of loud banging and, and disturbance, and, and that's just more stress on our wildlife, and so we want to prevent that as well. So year-round, uh, fireworks are prohibited on wildlife management areas. Another reminder, too, is that drones are prohibited um, on wildlife management areas. A lot of people trap or bow hunt uh, heavy equipment on our WMAs. Right. Uh, explain that a little bit, Bill. Yeah, so for on the wildlife management areas, you can leave your tree stand or your ground blind or your trap if you're trapping or a trail camera up um, from a certain date. You can put it out on August 20th and you need to have it removed by the end of January. And you need to have an ID on there so you can have your name, address, phone number on there, that was always what was required. And you still can have that if you say it had a tag on there. Um, but what's new is we have equipment ID option and so it's a unique number to you. So you'll go on our website and you can get a number and that number will stay the same every year. So if you want to make a tag that could go on your traps or whatever, you can have that. And then when you go out, the, you know, you don't, the person doesn't know who it is when they look at their tree stand because that was the complaint some people has like oh that's mike anderson's sure, tree stand sure. that must be a good spot i know he shoots big bucks and so that that was one of the reasons why we switched to that um and then the the traps is a new thing last year we included that so if you're trapping on a wildlife management area, remember you need to have a trap tag on your traps what happens if they don't remove their tree stands by the end of january or their traps or whatever it may be right um We'll make the rounds and, uh, and, and remove those and confiscate them, and then we actually sell those in a wrap auction. And we prefer not to have to do that, but it's getting to be a real issue. Uh, we'll go into an area, for example, like Kimball Bottoms, and we'll pull 20 tree stands down um, in March. And uh, it's something that you're, we're just cheating the other sportsmen with it. We're, we're leaving those tree stands in, in spots that you know, everyone should have a chance of, of hunting. Another big issue that we have every year is litter on our mm -hmm. WMAs. We, we spend more time picking up litter than we really should. And people just should keep in mind, when we're doing that, we're not able to do other things that are productive. When we're having to replace shot up signs or pick up litter, I'll do all these things that are kind of nonsense. Um, and I just encourage people to, if they have some time, just to pick up a little bit of that. I mean, we'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, we're doing it as well. We just want to keep these areas as clean as possible. Bill, the other thing that's really popular on several of our WMAs around the state is our gun ranges. We just, uh, we didn't build a new one, but we fixed up, I guess you could say, the range in Williston to Lewis and Clark Wildlife Management Area. We know that it gets a lot of use and uh, it's a great facility. We did the same thing south of Mandan about six years ago, south of Bismarck at McLean uh, a few years ago as well. We also have a range of Wilton. We have one in Riverdale. And so, um, you know, they're just great areas. They're open to the public 365 days a year, sunrise to sunset, absolutely free. And they get a lot of use and it's a great thing. And, and we rely on volunteers to do most of the just education of people, maintenance. And we have some incredible volunteers. It's just amazing what they do and how dedicated they are. And so if there's any other folks out there that are interested in that, especially up in Williston, we could always use more help. A lot of good information, Bill. So if you want to go wildlife watching, hunting, yep. just out for a nice walk, these WMAs are a perfect place to go. Yeah, they really are. Thanks, Bill. Yep. For more information on the rules and regulations of our wildlife management areas around the state, go to the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Bill Haas and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.